Uh, my name is Gerard Reedy. I'm a, a neuroradiologist and a biochemist or MRI expert, uh, and I do uh, traumatic brain injury research for the uh, military. Traumatic brain injury, or TBI as its acronym is known, is uh, unusual mechanical forces to the brain that uh, do damage. Your brain is surrounded by a skull which protects it, and it's also surrounded by a buffering fluid called cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF. When the unusual forces hit the brain, they do damage in ways that uh, can either be short-term or long-term, and that is sort of the sequela of TBI, or traumatic brain injury. There are various signs, I mean, and, and often these go away as a function of time, especially in the mild traumatic brain injury. Following a car accident or something like that, someone will have headaches and difficulty with memory and other sort of short-term uh, problems with sort of brain function. And these typically resolve over uh, a period of three to six months in most folks with mild traumatic brain injury. Some of them go on to have persistent symptoms, and those are the folks that we want to figure out what's going on in their brain and how we can potentially treat them and even potentially mitigate uh, the, the long-term symptoms at the time of injury. I had finished my fellowship up in Baltimore in Washington, D.C. It was just a small drive away, so I thought I would, after the war started, go out and help out. Like most Americans, uh, you want to contribute in some way, and I didn't really want to join uh, the Army or the Navy or the military, but I did want to help, so I had certain sets of skills in terms of my neuroradiology and my MR expertise I thought I would bring down, bring them down to Washington, D.C. at Walter Reed and apply them uh, for assistance to the guys coming back with these injuries. I called them and I said, uh, you know, I'm interested in helping out, and they said, well, come on down and we'll see what we can do. You know, back then, the military was good at buying machines, but not necessarily good at buying personnel. So they bought the machines, and the neuroradiologists would, would sort of program the machines to do uh, imaging, but most of them are not experts in how the machines acquire data. And they're certainly not experts in image processing. So we submitted a grant to get money to build a whole image processing team and develop new software and new uh, acquisition modalities uh, to acquire different types of images. Standard routine imaging is almost by definition normal in mild TBI. So a standard MR, a standard CT is normal. In, in fact, you see nothing on a, a standard uh, MRI or CT in the mild TBI patients. And that's the vast majority that we see, about 80% of the folks coming back. But we knew we could do better. There are many advanced imaging techniques like diffuse and tensor imaging, uh, functional MRI, spectroscopy, so other things that aren't done routinely uh, at most medical treatment facilities or hospitals that we could apply. It just takes more than one person to do that. It really takes a team to deal with this data, and that's what our grant helped us do, was to build this team that we could look at these advanced imaging capabilities. These guys come back and they get routine imaging, and it's read as normal. They don't see anything just with the routine structural imaging. And, and that, that can have an effect on them. They know that their daily life has been affected. They know that you know, they can't make decisions like they used to. They can't pick out the proper laundry detergent. It takes them, it, it, it tires their brain out to shop or do things that they used to just do normally. Executive function, memory problems, this sort of stuff. And that's tough when you've got that dis brain dysfunction in the face of a normal imaging exam. You know, doctors say, well, we looked at your brain and the MRI is normal. Well, it's probably not normal. It's just damage beyond the, our ability to see it. So what we're trying to do is stretch that ability to see it and capture data that allows us to see subtle abnormalities in the brain that we can point to and say, yep, that's traumatic brain injury. And I can tell, when you, I can tell you when you show the guys and their families, you point to these little scars or these little areas that are abnormal, they're actually relieved that, they've, that we found something, that it's not just in their head, as some people have been telling them. We developed software over the last three years uh, at Walter Reed and now at the National Intrepid Center of Excellence uh, to uh, do these advanced imaging uh, techniques on traumatic brain injury uh, people returning from the field. However, the route of their return is, is some, somewhat circuitous. They go from Afghanistan or Iraq, uh, back when Iraq was active, uh, to Longstuhl, Germany, and then they return to the Washington, D.C. area. And that takes, on an average, I would say three weeks to a month. So we're seeing guys that are at least a month from injury. 
And so when uh, they decided to potentially put scanners in Afghanistan, I said, well, we need, if we do that, we need to do it right. We need to get that time point more acute, right near the time of injury. And uh, we need to collect the proper data, not the routine imaging data, but we need to transform our advanced uh, neuroimaging techniques to these mobile scanners that are going in the theater. So I sent up a proposal to the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs and they accepted it and said, yeah, we need to do this, so go ahead, go program the scanners. So I've come now to the Netherlands uh, to program the scanners here on site before they go into the theater. If you think about uh, traumatic brain injury, it happens at a, a, a specific time and event, and it's much like a cut in your finger. I mean, if you cut your finger, your body then begins to try to make it heal. So you want to see what the cut is at the time of injury. You can assess it, you can assess how deep it is, you can assess uh, how long it is and that sort of stuff. So looking at a cut to your finger four weeks later is going to be a lot different than looking at a cut exactly when it happens. So that missing time point is really right after they get injured and that's probably when we're going to see the most in terms of neuroimaging. We certainly see stuff uh, back a month out and even years out, but that's sort of the scar or what's left from the damage, much like if you cut your finger, you develop a scar. So what we want to see is what happens at the time of injury. If we know what happens at the time of injury, then we can hopefully develop treatments to help mitigate those things. Following, following up years later, with the, looking at the scar, if we have all that time, all the data from the time points in between, we can then begin to evaluate what happens, what's the normal longitudinal effect of traumatic brain injury. So if we can figure out what's going on with these guys with blast injury, I think that'll translate down to the milder, I don't want to say milder injury, but different injuries that we see in the civilian sector. I think it's unique, uh, the blast injuries, the folks that the military have exposure to, but I think there's sort of common end results. Again, it doesn't matter if you cut your finger with uh, you know, a razor, a knife, or a, a chainsaw. Well, it probably does, but you, the end result is going to be a scar. The end result is how the body deals with it. It might just look different. So the plan is I'm going to go into theater once the units are in there and train the technologists and make sure the images that I'm getting are quality images and uh, then work on the data transmission. The idea is to transmit the images to the uh, national and uh, to the military site where I am and have them read by experts, myself and other TBI uh, neuroradiologists. And then the interpretations will be sent back to the field. And I think it is going to make a difference when we get that initial uh, time point right after injury and then they come back to the states and we can follow them up and see how that injury has evolved over time. I think we'll have a much better idea of what's happening in the brains of these folks who have been through a blast injury or other trauma uh, in theater. And we'll be able to help them, which is the long-term goal, not just to say, yes, you've got traumatic brain injury, but to say, yes, you've got it, and here's a treatment that works 80% of the time for you.